What is photosynthesis? And why is it hard? Well, there are different forms. I mean, basically, you're taking hydrogen and you're sticking it onto CO2 and it's powered by the sun. The question is, where are you taking the hydrogen from? And in photosynthesis that we know in plants, it's coming from water. So you're using the power of the sun to split water, take out the hydrogen, stick it onto CO2, and the oxygen is a waste product and you just throw it out, throw it away. So it's a, you know, the single greatest planetary pollution event in the whole history of, of, of the earth. The pollutant being oxygen. Yes. Yeah. It also made possible animals. You can't have large active animals without an oxygenated atmosphere, at least not, not in the sense that we know on earth. So that's a really big invention. In the history Huge of invention, Earth. yes. And it happened once. There's a few things that happen once on Earth, and you know, you're always stuck with this problem. Is it did once it happened, did it become so good so quickly that it precluded the the same thing happening ever again? Or are there other reasons? And we really have to look at each one in turn and think, well, what's what's why did it only happen once? In this case, it's really difficult to split water. It requires a lot of power, and that power, you're effectively separating charge across a membrane, and the way in which you do it, if it doesn't all rush back and, and, and kind of cause an explosion right at the site, requires really careful wiring. Um, and that wiring, it can't be easy to get it right, because, you know, <laughs> the plants that we see around us, they have chloroplasts. Those chloroplasts were cyanobacteria ones. Those cyanobacteria are the only group of bacteria that can do that type of photosynthesis. So, there's plenty of opportunity. So not even many bacteria. So who who invented photosynthesis? That the cyanobacteria or their ancestors. And there's not many. Um, no other bacteria can do what's called oxygenic photosynthesis. Lots of other bacteria can split. For, I mean, you can take your your hydrogen from somewhere else. You can take it from hydrogen sulfide bubbling out of a hydrothermal vent. Grab your two hydrogens. The sulfur is the waste now. Yeah. Um, you can do it from iron. You can take electrons, so the early oceans were probably full of iron. You can take an electron from ferrous iron, so iron 2 plus, and make it iron 3 plus, mm -hmm. which now precipitates as rust. Uh, and you take a, a, a proton from the, the acidic early ocean, stick it there, now you've got a hydrogen atom. Stick it onto CO2, you've just done the trick. The trouble is, you bury yourself in rusty iron. And with sulfur, you can bury yourself in sulfur. One of the reasons oxygenic photosynthesis is so much better is that the waste product is oxygen, which just bubbles away. That seems like extremely unlikely, and it's extremely essential for the evolution of complex organisms because of all the oxygen. Yeah, and that produces. didn't accumulate quickly either. So it's converting, what is it? It's converting energy from the sun and the resource of water into the resource needed for animals? Both resources needed for animals. We need to eat and we need to burn the food. And the, we're eating plants, um, which are getting their energy from the sun, and we're burning it with their waste product, which is the oxygen. So there's a lot of kind of circularity in that. But with, 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 without an oxygenated planet, you couldn't really have um, predation. You'd you you don't you, you can have animals, but you can't really have animals that go around and eat each other. You can't have ecosystems as we know them 